going on there YouTube? So a little kind of a short video today. Um, you've seen me talk about before the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo in February in Williston, Florida. Um, this year I'm wanting to teach a class. They have class like uh, styrene basics, um, the soldering, stuff like that. Just good essential things if you're new to the hobby, things like that. Um, but I, my class is going to be kind of a basic patina and weathering. And it's taken me a while to find the right piece because that's part of the deal is you, you come, we provide everything, the, the uh, event, you know, we've got a, these fenders here and we're going to paint them, It'll be different colors and different things and I'll show you my processes and how I do it and then you actually have a piece to take home to either hang on your scale shop wall or just use for reference to try to do your own thing and it's a really cool concept that, that event is really awesome it's great for everybody from expert level builders to beginners if you just come out there and buy your first RC um, there are vendors and stuff there I'll have a booth set up and I will be doing the class and today is a test run so I'm gonna do I got a couple different colors here I'm gonna I haven't weathered anything in quite a while actually so I need to kind of run through my processes myself get a good idea of, of what kind of materials and stuff we're gonna need and then I'll get with Rob and get the uh, everything there for the show so uh, let's start with our vacuum form parts. So these are styrene and my friend Wes Braswell um, there's a link below to his channel he does all kinds of crazy scratch built stuff and he built a 53 or 54 Chevy pickup and he made bucks he made wooden molds basically in vacuum form styrene to make all the panels and um, I got with him because I needed something cool. You know, I need something that fits my style, but it would be something cool for you to hang on your your scale garage wall when you get home from the event. And um, he's going to make some extra pieces here from his bucks, and he can vacuum form other things, and he can just throw one of these in the corner every time if he's got a lot of extra styrene, and he can print out a bunch of them for us to have at the event. And uh, right now i got two driver's side rear fenders, it looks like. I think that's... Yeah. Um, you see I ran the paint already. Uh, these are really cool. It's a nice, thick, that's probably a 2 or 3 mil styrene. And he, he gets amazing detail out of it. He's really fine-tuned that process. And it's cool to have something custom. That, you know, it's not like a store-bought thing. It's not like I went and got a, a little scale cooler or something we're going to do like that. Or, you, got, you know, not anything silly. It's actually something cool. Um, I believe he's going to do odds and ends, so there might be a... Front fender, back fender, either side, but pretty cool, and I appreciate Wes for helping out, because I believe, I think he's doing a class again this year. He did a, a intro to Styrene, working with Styrene last year, and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. He's, he's got his whole system set up for this stuff, and it, it's pretty dang sweet. <laughs> it's a definitely a, a very awesome skill to have that he's, he's developed with it. But, um, yeah, so all I've done with these two pieces here is I primered them with Tamiya primer, which I would rather have used just a regular spray primer to cheap stuff from Walmart because we are going to take some of it off. We're going to sand it down and, uh, you know, they just kind of, the, the Tamiya paint seemed to really bond and uh, I tried, I think it was the ramp truck hood, I used some Tamiya yellow TS paint and uh it wouldn't sand off. It got nice and smooth and that, that paint hardened and it was like, it was solid. <laughs> so, um, yeah, had a lot more yellow showing on my patina. But um, it's a very simple process. I mean, and, and when we're doing this at the event, we can use any color. It doesn't matter. Um, typically, what I like to do is run a dark color on the bottom. Um, I usually put a black or like a, a rust red primer or something like that. But the key to this that I, I found, like I said, is just using basic paints. All of these new paints now, they all bond with plastic and metal and wood and whatever. They're all pretty much universal and they're cheap. These little cans from Walmart and stuff probably cost less than this teeny tiny can of Tamiya paint. So they go a lot longer. You can paint, like I've painted an entire hard, hard body with this color, this Satin Lagoon. I did my Forerunner, or my Forerunner, my uh, old FJ Land Cruiser that uh, the RC four-wheel drive Jalon 2 that we did a long time ago and uh, yeah another key thing is I like to stay with satin 
satin or flat. So the satin colors and the flat colors, they just seem to work better. If you use a gloss, you, you're just going to have to sand it down more to get the sheen off of it. Because it's when it's glossy, the rust streak stuff kind of runs off of it faster. And, and this satin paint that I found, it actually sets in with it. And it, it stains it a lot quicker, a lot better, and um, a heck of a lot easier. But uh, the first step we're going to do here, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to put another color on these. Uh, that's going to be the key thing with setting up the event. Is I think we're only going to have 30 minutes for a class. Maybe an hour. I'm not sure yet. So, painting. I, I'm going to need... I may have to bring a heat gun and do stuff like that to hurry and dry the, the layers because we only have so much time and it needs to be dry enough to sand. Now, we are going to be outside and central Florida. It was kind of warm out there, so it, it'll help with the drying process, but who knows? It could rain any time down there. <laughs> um... But yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and hit these with another color on top of this, and then we'll see what we're going to sand it with in a right, So I hit the satin vintage teal with some satin tan, or some flat sand, camo colors. And I hit the satin lagoon with a matte, matte evening navy. Ooh, sounds fancy. Just dark blue. <laughs> And uh, it's already starting to dry pretty quick. I did pretty light coats. Um, I've got my heat gun. I'm a little worried this thing is going to cook it. You have to be careful. This is styrene. This is not a hard plastic body, which you could still cook with one of these. So I'm going to turn the settings down. We'll put it on low. And that's all the way hot. Try not to melt this stuff. <laughs> Alright, I want it on high, but I need the heat down. Making my lights flicker. It's really weird. Maybe we got some cracking on the tan. That's interesting. And the cool part about this is it doesn't matter. That's going to add a neat effect, and it's just going to be an accident. Um, dirt and stuff blows in it while we're outside painting. Doesn't matter. It's going to sand out. If it shows up, it shows up. This stuff is pretty thin. It's not getting brittle though. It's not getting soft, I mean. Just a little closer so we can do both at the same time. That cracking is really cool. I don't know why that happened. Maybe I didn't shake the paint enough or what, but that is gonna hopefully make a really neat effect. So I'm gonna do this off and on here. It's still tacky. <laughs> And I'm going to let it cool for a few minutes. We've got to try to do this pretty quickly again because of the time crunch of the event. And then we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, so it's been about five minutes. Um, the blue is a little, a little hard, harder to dry. It's a little tacky in a couple spots, but we're going to roll with it. The tan is all but completely dry. Those cracks really came out cool, so I'm hoping that adds to the effect. I'm going to start with some 120. Um, I don't remember what I ever use. I have two junk drawers just full of sandpaper, of orbital sander paper, and cheap sandpaper, and nice sandpaper, and wet sandpaper, and I don't really know what I've got, so I'm just going to start just taking it down pretty quick. The problem with it being a little tacky is it's going to gum up in the paper, but not too worried about it. just want to get some of the blue off and we'll move to a finer grit. The only time there's any real technique to this is uh, like your edges are going to be worn. You, get, you think back, look at some real car pictures and stuff like that where patina happens. Where there's probably, if this was a real old car part, there'd be dents and dings all over this, um, which we could easily do. If you wanted, you could hit it with some heat, soldering iron or something, just kind of put some dents and stuff in it. but. But right now, I'm just going to test. See, we're already getting down to the white, so this is probably a little too aggressive. Let me try 600. That may be way too soft. But we brought some of the green out. And it's, it, there's really no wrong colors or anything. You can do whatever you want. Because old cars have been painted and, and uh, repainted and painted and rusted and painted over rust. and You never know what you're actually going to have under it. It's so just a good mix of Things. We'll put some deeper scratches in here, try to get some, some 
the lower colors out on the edges. And don't freak out because the white's showing already. Because once we add the rust streaks, it will uh, start making sense. <laughs> A little body line there trying to bring out. The thing is with this, more looks better. So I'm not trying to bring out too much of the white, but I'm trying to get a lot of marks in the blue so that the next layer we sand with, which is probably that 600, we'll start bringing out the other color more. Make sure I get everything a little bit. I get a lot of criticism, not a lot, but I get some from the way I do it. The scale model people like to comment on here and tell me, uh, my patinas, garbage, and all this and that, but it's it's different. I'm not trying to go for an exact replica of a you know a military tank from the World War II or something. It's this is different. This is just art. This is just fun. This is like you got a canvas and you paint it. There's no wrong way. I mean, we're totally Bob Ross in it here. Happy accidents doesn't matter. And um, yeah, not really. Not really caring. <laughs> Alright, so I've got some good marks all over this. I'm going to come back with this more used sandpaper here. Because I don't have any new sandpaper. But for the event, we'll have some new sandpaper. 600 will give you a nice finish to actually work off of. Um, sometimes I'll actually wet sand this part of the process. But it gives you a little bit of different effect. I'm not sure how the... I guess I could try it since we're right here. Let's see how this actually does. We may may take this to the sink and wet sand it. That may be the key here. Let's do that real quick. All right, pretty exciting. I don't have dirty dishes everywhere. So this will help keep the sandpaper clear while we're doing it. And um, may have to do this at UST. You have a bucket of water or something. It's going to keep a steady flow of water going. And uh, yeah, we'll get the parts dusted free here and we'll go to town with the 600 grit. Everything is dry and it's time for the fun part. Um, for this I need some old t-shirts and I'm pretty happy with how it come out. I use the 60 grit to add the scratches and really get down here to the white and uh, you can see the primer around the openings. The 600 grit with the wet sanding smooths everything out. It is super smooth. You can't even really feel the scratches. So the product I use is AK Interactive brand Rust Streaks. And I know this is not their intended purpose, but this is what I've always done, and it works really well for this. So, ooh, I need to find a paintbrush. I hope I actually have a paintbrush. All right, I got one. It's a little bigger than I usually use, but hopefully that'll speed up the process some. Now, the way I do this, I just smear this all over. And if you don't shake this very well, you, it separates a little bit and you get a lighter, thinner wash basically is what we're doing. And you shake it up real good, you get a really thick wash and it dries fairly quickly. Not completely, but it dries enough to get a look at it. So we're gonna smear it on and then we're gonna wipe. And I'm not sure yet, we just gotta see how it looks over the colors. Depends on how it starts drying and everything and how much we wipe it. So I'm just gonna smear this on with this little paper. So got it coated pretty well. The 
larger brush uh, bristles leaving streaking marks so we probably will wipe a little more aggressively than I was intending. Um, the first time I ever did this I had a little fan going in here because it was hot and it made it dry way too fast so definitely got to be careful for that. So I've got some old t-shirts. got one that's actually not terribly dirty and one that's been used for this a uh, lot. And uh, I'm just going to start wiping. I'm just going to grab it. We'll start seeing what we get. Probably should have let that one set a little longer. I may actually just hit that again because it's doing weird stuff. <laughs> but you don't want to wipe too much because it will start taking the paint off. So yeah, that one, that one wasn't dry. Being a lighter color, I was kind of afraid it might dry quicker or might stain quicker. I can't get this off of there. Now it's flipped. All right. So I'm going to leave that one be here for a minute and we'll move over to the next one. Let's see what we've got here. Try dabbing it off instead of wiping. Gives you a little bit different look. Forgot about that. Probably should have done this on the other one. And you can add a little bit of streaking as long as it's the direction of movement like this would have been a driver's side fender so you want your marks to go that direction. And uh, yeah, really looks completely different than it did before we added that. Go ahead and wipe that inside edge. So I'm going to let this stuff dry for a bit and uh, We'll see if we need to do another coat or not. happy with how it came out. Uh, if I remember back now after spraying that, that Satin Lagoon paint, it did not like this stuff well. And I think that's why I ended up using, the why my old uh, Land Cruiser got weathered a whole lot because the paint didn't take to the uh, rust streaks very well. I think I ended up using the rust all kit which is a lot more watered down. Um, it came out okay but it looks marbly. I don't know, it's just got too much going on. <clears throat> you can't see enough of the base color. It almost looks like a marble or some kind of natural stone. This is not the look we were going for at all. Um, and I was hoping more of the dark blue would come out, but it, it didn't. It just ate right through that. So, that being said, the uh, vintage teal color actually looked pretty cool with the tan. Um, it looks like some scale. The best part about it is the way it cracked. So that camouflage paint being a, a completely flat finish may have something to do with that. I'm not sure if I can get it to come out in camera. The back half of it here has got still got a texture almost. It looks pretty cool. It looks like the the teal paint's coming off and the beige is down in there with the rust. And uh it's kinda neat because it came out opposite. That was the opposite of the way it was sprayed. It was the teal first. Then that um I do believe that when we actually do it at the class Probably going to start with black as a base coat. Um, I didn't have any when I painted these yesterday and uh, the, it needs a little bit more dark at, at the base of it. So I think uh, instead of using a, a primer color we'll go ahead and use a black. But that's the cool part about this. You can do anything. You can do three different primers. You can do eight colors. It just depends on how much you want to sand, how much you want to dig down into it and uh, what all you want to come out. Bringing out the white um, it may be because it was the plastic and not the, uh, not a paint. It didn't take the rust streaks as well. So it didn't make it, uh, darken up as much as I would liked. But, uh, that's why we do this trial run. So, I'm, I'm thinking these two colors will probably be the base for what we're going to do. And I'll add a black underneath it. Um, once it all dries and cures, uh, I did it with the, uh, heat gun. And it's dry enough to touch now. I'm not getting, I already had some all over my fingers, but uh, 
I may repaint that one, I'm not sure. I don't know if I can paint over the rust streaks. I may have to sand on it and stuff. But um, yeah, I think that this one actually looks the part. I think it needs a big dent right here and uh, to complete the look because it's way too straight to be a old rusty fender. But it looks, the, the, the texture on it up close, really not sure if I can get it to come out in camera. It's really cool. That uh, looks like maybe somebody like brush painted the teal over a tan truck or something and it's just there's no consistency to it it's it's different every angle's different you can see here where the run was on the teal and it popped through you get a little bit of texture from the material that you use to uh, dry it off or dab the uh, rust streaks off if you wipe it you get smears if you dab it you get that marbly effect which it's not necessarily a good thing on that one I think that one was worsened by doing a second coat and it really ate through that blue. So we're going to leave that blue at home. I don't know. They're all the same kind of paint. It was an ultimate ultra matte. So maybe that's why it didn't absorb as well as the satin. And I think this tan being a flat paint really made it pop and made it grainy. And when it cracked, when you sprayed it and heated it, that was awesome. That would be definitely be something I'm going to try to recreate later. So I'm going to wrap this one up, guys. USTE, the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo, is going to be February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd in Cedar Lakes Woods. It's a botanical garden. It's a beautiful place. Um, the trails, if you just want to come and bring your scale trucks out, it's awesome. Awesome place to drive. There's no competition. There's no nothing. There's going to be some races and stuff, but it's all just for fun. But there's just, I think they're adding a couple trails this year, if I remember right. The last year there was nine trails, and they're just, I mean hours worth of hours worth of a trail could be two hours to drive with your tiny truck and uh it's beautiful scenery meet lots of people see lots of products and uh take some of the classes if you're interested you know i'm hoping to do this class out there and uh if you're interested in it contact uste link will be in the video description and see about signing up because at this point i'm not sure how to do that but uh <laughs> Um, all the proceeds go back to the event. I'm not making any money off having a class. I'm just there to teach and to learn from other people. And that's kind of the whole vibe of the event. And uh, it's put on by some good folks down in Florida. Again, in February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And uh, hope to see some of y'all out there. Links are all in the video description. Keep it scale, and I will see y'all in the next one.